let's move to our next topic that is purification of water now this purification of water or our water treatment plant it has to go i mean the water has to go through the various processes such as screening aeration sedimentation it can be plain sedimentation or it can be sedimentation aided with coagulation after that filtration so depending upon that we can use rapid sand slow sand filter rapid sand filter or pressure filter and so on disinfection so disinfection has to has to be done to remove the bacteria and viruses so there are various methods such as ozone and we the very important method is disinfection with chlorine so after that if the water is hard we have to go for the softening processes also and if flor insufficient fluoride is not there so fluoride has to be added or if the fluoride is in excess then we may have to do the defluoridation also so there are other miscellaneous processes also but these are the main ones so we'll see one by one and after that we'll see for a particular type of treatment i mean de depending upon what is there in excess such as if it is a hard water then what should be the process or if taste and color is there in water so what should be included like for taste and color we have to do the aeration so there are various combination of these several processes because in a treatment plant all of these processes are not used depending upon the water quality we choose some of these processes so we'll see which process should be choose depending upon the quality of water if it is hard or other issues are there so first is screening screening is just done if some major like tree branches or very major things are there in water so it is done to remove that there is no not much to understand in that so we'll begin with the sedimentation so first we'll see the plain sedimentation so first of all sedimentation is based upon the theory that if a particle has specific gravity let's say gs so that specific gravity if it is greater than the specific gravity of water so for specific gravity of water is 1 so any particle which has specific gravity greater than 1 it will settle in water under the action of gravity that is simply the theory of sedimentation so depending upon that the velocity of settlement is calculated using various formula very famous one is stokes formula and this is applied when we assume the flow is laminar or viscous stokes law so the velocity of settlement if stokes law is followed it is given as g by 18 gs minus 1 d square by nu here gs is the specific gravity of particle the d is the particle size and nu is the kinematic viscosity and this d this stokes law is valid only if the size of particle is less than 0.1 mm so that that in this condition only we can apply stokes law and and it also implies that it is a viscous flow and if it is a turbulent flow then the stokes law is not valid how we got get to know if it is a turbulent flow the particle size is greater than 1 mm so if the particle size is such big then it causes hindrance in the settlement so turbulence is caused and in that case velocity of settlement is given as 1.8 under root of g d g s minus 1 so meaning is same for all the things and if it is a transient flow transient flow means the particle size is between 0.1 to 1 mm between this laminar and the turbulent if it is a transient flow then velocity of settlement is given as 418 gs minus 1 d 3t plus 70 by 100 so here temperature is also included this temperature is in celsius degree celsius so that is for the different formula now the sedimentation can type tank can be of two types it can be of discrete 
or it can be a continuous type continuous fill type so discrete tank simply means you will fill it with water then it will be kept for a while like for some time given specific time that we call the detention period and in that period this what these particles what are there they will settle and then we will move this water then again another batch will come that is your discrete type of tank so that those tanks are not used nowadays the continuous fill type are used so the water is con continuously flowing and depending upon that size and other parameters are defined so in the continuous flow type the tanks are of two type that is horizontal tank and another one is vertical tank so first let's see the vertical one so what happens here this is a vertical tank so water will enter like this from here and it will move upward and here suitable arrangement will be there oh, like overflow wear or something so here this water is collected now as the water is moving upward so velocity of water let's say it is v0 it is in the upward direction and velocity of settlement of particle is vs because due to the action of gravity particles will be settling now in this kind of tanks this velocity of flow that is in the upward direction it should be less than velocity of settlement if this is the case then only particle will settle it means that the particles which are having the velocity greater than this upward velocity the, these will settle and the particles which are having less velocity than this upward flow velocity they will simply not settle they will simply go with this outflowing water but in the horizontal tank the theory is different so let's try to understand horizontal tank in more detail because in horizontal tank some of these particles which are having velocity of settlement less than this velocity v0 they will also settle so let's say we have a horizontal tank so this length is l and in this direction width is b this is b and this is h so velocity of flow the water will be entering from here so first of all there the two assumptions are there which are very important to remember first one is the particle which reaches the bottom of the tank bottom of the tank is removed so all the particles if they have hit the bottom like if they have reached this bottom then they are removed it is the assumption that they are not being flowed with this water again and another one is that the concentration of particles of each size each size is same in the vertical cross section so what does this one mean so vertical cross section you can take any cross section similar to this so in this cross section we are saying that the particles are of every size are in the same concentration i mean at every point so that means that if we have four particle sizes so this black one is one and then we have this blue one green and red so these are the four four particle size that exist in this cross section so the concentration of all these particle sizes will be same at all the points that means if we are talking about let's say this is half of this depth this total depth is h and at this point h by 2 so 
if let's say one mm particle is there for example so half of these one mm particles will be there below this depth and half of these one mm particle will be there above this depth so this this assumption is used later also that's why i'm trying to understand i'm trying to tell this in detail so this is about it now the velocity of flow how can we write in this case so velocity of flow so this is our tank this is a cross section that is this direction dimension is b this is h so this b into h will make the cross sectional area so velocity of flow v is equal to q that is the discharge divided by b into h discharge by area is your velocity of flow and let's say velocity of settlement velocity of settlement is vs now velo particles are settling in this direction in the downward direction and velocity of flow is in this direction so that means this velocity of flow v is proportional to l because length by time is the velocity and this velocity of settlement it will be proportional to what it will be proportional to this depth so we can write the ratio that is v by vs is equal to l by h and from here the vs is equal to v into h by l and v we can replace from this equation that is q upon bh into h by l which is equal to from here we get vs is equal to q upon b into l which is nothing but discharge divided by surface area so this q by bl that is discharge divided by surface area b into l is our surface area it is known as the surface overflow rate let's try to understand what this surface overflow rate represents so let's say we had this tank and let's say we have this tank t so a particle starts from this point and in time t it travels a distance of l and in the same time t it travels a distance of h also so that means this particle will go something like this that is v said that v is the velocity of flow v and vs is the velocity of settlement and this particle is starting from the topmost point then v is equal to l upon t similarly velocity of settlement is equal to h upon t and if we divide this we will get v upon vs is equal to l upon h which is same as this earlier equation we got here which means that finally we will get the velocity of settlement as surface overflow rate it means this surface overflow rep rate represents or sor it represents the velocity or the settling velocity of smallest particle which is removed which is removed completely or by 100% why is it so because if this particle let's say it has a die of d it is starting from the topmost point and it, it is hitting the bottom here it means that the same particle which is having a die d if it starts from here somewhere below the depth then obviously it will hit somewhere here so it is removed if it is further below then also it is removed because at the topmost point also it is being removed it means that if it starts somewhere below it is completely removed so that's why the surface overflow rate represents the velocity of smallest particle which is removed completely now this is about the complete removal but in horizontal type tank partial removal also takes place whereas in vertical tank partial removal does not happen because in vertical tank what did we say 
this is your vertical tank so here velocity of upward flow let's say it was v0 and velocity of settlement for some particle is vs now if vs is greater than v0 this particle will settle and for the particles vs is less than v0 they will simply flow out of, out with this water they will not settle this is a sim sim simple logic but in case of horizontal tank partial removal also takes place so let's try to understand this so this is our tank let's say let a particle starts from here it has a settling velocity vs and let's say we have another particle it is starting somewhere below and it has a velocity vs dash and a height small h and this big total depth is capital H. Now let's say in time t, this particle which is there on the top, it travels total depth H, that is we can write time t is equal to distance upon velocity. Similarly, we can say in this same time t, this particle which is having a velocity Vs dash travels a smaller distance, small h. So this t is also equal to h upon Vs dash now this time is equal so we can equate both it means small h i mean capital h or we can simply write h upon vs is equal to small h upon vs dash which means that vs dash upon vs is equal to h small h upon capital h what does it represent that if a particle is having smaller velocity vs dash and if it is starting at a smaller height small h it will be removed how much of these particles will be removed it will depend upon this height so let's say this small h is equal to 0.5 of h now earlier we said that in a vertical cross section the concentration of all these particles is same at each point that means if we are talking about this blue particle so this let's say this small h is equal to as i said is capital H by 2 so half of these blue particles will be there above this depth and half of these blue particles will be there below this depth it means that whatever particles are there below this depth H they will be settled because here we got this equation that even if this velocity is less they will settle in proportional to their height so half of these particles will, will settle similarly if this h is equal to small h h is equal to 0.25 of capital H then in this 0.25 h this concentration of these particles will also be 25 percent because we made an assumption that these particles are distributed equally so 25 percent of the particles will be removed if this small h is equal to 0.25 h now here this equation left hand side represents that the particles will be removed particles will be removed in proportional to their velocity in proportion proportion to their velocity of surface overflow rate because this bs nothing it represent it represents the surface overflow rate so they will be removed in this proportion vs dash upon vs it is also equal to surface overflow rate so this will be further clear if we take an example so we can write the percentage removal as let's say p is equal to vs dash upon vs into 100 because it is also equal to small h upon capital H so for let's say for example it is also equal to small h upon capital H into 100 so let's say small h is equal to 0.5 of capital H so what will it mean here 0.5 h upon capital H into 100 that is equal to 50 percent so these particles are removed by 50 percent so this ratio small h by capital H is equal to is vs dash upon vs so both will give the same answer that is what it means after that there are some smaller things that is one is detention period so detention period 
simply we can find out as volume divided by discharge so it is simply it simply means that for how much time this water water is being kept in the tank so the retention period for this sedimentation tank it should be between 4 to 8 hours if it is a plain sedimentation and it is equal to 2 to 4 hours if it is sedimentation added with coagulation but due to some other reasons like short circuiting so the water which enters on the top side it does not stay in the water up to its detention period I mean we have designed retention period let's say for 4 hours so the water which is entering from the topmost point or the topmost layer it will leave before these 4 hours are complete that means it will a particle which is starting from here it will end up on this phase let's say in 2 or 3 hours not in 4 hours so these are the short circuiting effects that take place because of turbulence and eddies also so some, it is not we can say it is not a very perfect situation in reality but for our analysis we assume it to be perfect so the actual time that is 4 hours is its detention period and let's say for 2 hours it stayed here so this 2 hours is its flow through period so this flow through period means the actual time which a batch of water takes to pass through a pass through the tank which is called as flow through period now there is a ratio that is called as displacement efficiency and it is given as flow through period divided by the detention period so after this we will see examples related to this sedimentation